The coronavirus pandemic will surely have major effects on society for decades to come. One area where we could see major effects is birth rates. Doing a quick search on coronavirus birth rates, I was shocked to learn that many people think social isolation will lead to some sort of baby boom. These people have clearly never seen a baby. Instead, this crisis will almost certainly cause a decline in births, something that might be called a baby bust. The twin dangers of economic uncertainty and disease will rightly cause many people to hold off on having children. The scope of this drop in birth rates will be proportional to the length and severity of this crisis. Only time will tell how severe it turns out to be. Spoiler alert, probably really long and bad. Regardless, there is going to be some significant effect on the birth rate. Researchers from the Brookings Institute used data from past recessions and the Spanish flu to estimate that there could be a loss of half a million births in the U.S. just in this year, representing a decline of over 10%. 10% might not sound like a lot, but keep in mind that over the past 40 years, the average yearly change in birth rates was only 0.52%. This massive decline will have a ripple effect on society as the smaller-than-usual cohort travels up the population pyramid. This cohort represents a negative wave, a trough, that will affect institutions and future population trends. First, let's look at colleges, organizations that regularly absorb and graduate wide swaths of the population at similar ages. In 18 years from now, when this cohort begins the college admissions process, they may have an easier, albeit slightly, time with admissions. They'll face less competition, yet colleges are not likely to reduce the number of available slots. However, this reduced enrollment may be a challenge for colleges. Costs like faculty, staff, and buildings would be difficult to ramp down and then ramp up rapidly just for this small cohort. Therefore, colleges will have to maintain the costs of all of these services while having a smaller paying student population, likely resulting in a budget shortfall. For selective colleges that receive more applicants than they admit, this is unlikely to be an issue. But for other smaller, more inclusive programs, this could be a significant challenge. At the other end of the college pipeline, graduating students in this cohort may again have an advantage in the job market. The population surrounding them has largely not changed, thus providing a relatively stable demand for jobs. Yet, employers will find a dearth of new grads for their entry-level positions. This reduction in supply could lead to more offers, more competitive compensation, and less competition for future promotions. Finally, moving away from institutions, this cohort of reduced population may spawn their own demographic trough 20 to 30 years downstream of themselves. This is because when this cohort begins to have kids, there are less of them to have those kids, causing this downstream trough. We can kind of see this effect in the 1918 influenza pandemic. You can clearly see a downward trend here during the peak of the pandemic, but you can also see what might be a wider and shallower trough roughly 20 years later. Although, this data is so clouded by the Great Depression that it's hard to tell if this trough is unrelated or spurious. Take this analysis with many grains of salt. This downstream effect will become more spread and diffuse with each generation until it's unnoticeable. This is because the range of ages at which people have children, a few decades, is much wider than the age range of the cohort we're talking about, only a few years. Overall then, the COVID-19 pandemic is likely to have some significant, if not devastating, effects on our future demographics. While these effects may pose some small challenges towards society in the future, they're likely to pale in comparison to the underlying pain of destroyed family plans.